Hello, welcome to the Submarine Force Museum. Commander Brad Boyd, Director of the Museum and Officer in Charge, Historic Ship Nautilus. Today we're going to be talking about the Whitehead Mark III torpedo that you can see behind me. Now, I have a previous episode that actually ties the Whitehead torpedo and the Whitehead family to the Submarine Force Museum and the Sound of Music. So if you want to hear that story and the story of Agatha Whitehead and Georg von Trapp, uh, please go uh, see that episode. Um, but this is the actual torpedo that was made by the Whitehead Torpedo Company, uh, purchased by the Navy for use during uh, World War I. So with that, I'm going to pause for a second, and uh, we'll pick up with a closer view of the torpedo. All right, so the Whitehead Mark III torpedo is uh, 140 inches or 11 feet 8 inches long and it is 17.7 .7 inches in diameter. Um, and this is why it was fired out of an 18 inch torpedo tube. So you can see 17.7 .7 inches in diameter. Um, it was 845 pounds. Uh, by the way, that is a guide pen. So the same way if you ever watched our episode where we showed you the torpedo tube operations on board Nautilus, um, where there's a guide pen to help force the torpedo to be upright, that's what that is. It slides in a groove in the torpedo tube, which keeps your uh, uh, rudder and stern planes uh, in the upward direction or the horizontal direction as desired for rudder needs to be up down and the uh, stern planes need to be left right. Uh, but anyways, and then it ran, uh, by the way, that's the warhead section, the red part up there, so that's the warhead. It had 220 pounds of uh, gun cotton, I'll explain what that is in a second. Um, and then it had uh, a compressed air section. Um, it was filled by compressed air from the ship uh, through that connection right here actually. So uh, it would be pressed up to 1,300 pounds per square inch um, and then that air would be bled through uh, the, the engine section, the tail cone section here. Um, that's the three sections that actually made up the torpedo. Gun cotton, by the way, real fast, that's a nitrocellulose. That's the, uh, the technical term for it. Gun cotton is kind of the, uh, uh, the, the colloquial term or the, or the layman's term. It's a highly flammable compound uh, and it's made by nitrating cellulose. Uh, through exposure to nitric acid or some other mixture of uh, nitric acid and another acid. Um, and uh, it's used uh, as a replacement for gunpowder and propellant in firearms uh, as a way to uh, help make it a little bit more stable um, and a little bit more uh, uh, compressed in uh, for, for packaging. Um, it's also used uh, in uh, mining operations for low yield explosives there as well. So this is the development of explosives over time through, for naval weaponry and weaponry in general. But anyway, so that's the gun cotton section. Um, the uh, exploder, so it had contact, it's not a magnetic influence. It was not a homing torpedo. Um, it, it was fire and forget, you shoot in one direction and that's, it's just going down that one direction. Uh, there's no wire connection to the boat or anything like that. Uh, main difference between this and other torpedoes uh, was this right here. And this is the Aubrey gyroscope. So Ludwig Aubrey was an Austrian engineer and naval officer, and he uh, came upon uh, Leon Verschalt's uh, gyroscope, which was invented back in 1851, but really kind of ignored by everybody. And uh, he came up with a way to use it. And so you'd have a brass ball in there, and that ball was spun by compressed air through that connection right there, uh, down into it, um, and spun that, that ball up and that was able to determine what course that the torpedo was actually headed on and it would allow you to have a preset course and it would then, with the difference, be able to control the rudder to uh, steer the torpedo back on the course. Now this is not homing, this is just I want you to go down course 090, go, to, go east. And if you start getting pushed by set and drift or whatever um, to another, cor another direction, then you can use that to, uh, uh, rudder will bring you back onto 090 to make you much more likely to hit your target. That's what it's trying to do. Not homing to say the, the contact move over here, I know where it is, I'm going to steer to it, just keeping you on course. So that's that, and uh, Ludwig Aubrey uh, invented, uh, invented this, patented the design, and then sold it to uh, uh, Robert Whitehead, Robert and John Whitehead of the Torpedo Company to put into torpedoes. The other major in innovation with the uh, Whitehead torpedoes was the counter-rotating screw. So you see right here, you got the screw in front, and when that rotates this way to drive the, the torpedo forward, the torpedo will actually tend to rotate this way, it induces a torque. We have the same thing in submarines. We can control it there manually by either uh, using planes to control the, the rotation or design with uh, how planes are set to automatically naturally ro uh, 
uh, reduce that. Or you can introduce a counter-rotating screw like this one. So one rotates this way, the other rotates this way, and that eliminates that torque. And the torque's bad because if the torpedo starts to do this, then your rudder, which is a is vertical right here to control your horizontal motion, a vertical rudder starts to rotate as well. So you go from straight up and down to slightly turned, and when that turn happens, the rudder starts to act like a stern plane as well. So it not only has a left right, but it has an up and down component. And so you can actually drive the torpedo downwards or drive the torpedo upwards, so lawn dart into the bottom or porpoise, uh, just from the rotation of this and how the rudder's set. And then you've got uh, the stern planes, and if they're deflected in the wrong way, they're not gonna be holding the angle that you want for that. And they start to go from just an up-down component to having a left-right component as well. So the uh, counter-rotation eliminates that part and keeps the torpedo straight in the water combined with the gyroscope, which helps determine if it's off of course set and then bring the torpedo back onto course. So, but that's the Whitehead Mark III torpedo. Um, it was used until about 1922 uh, on the A, B, C, and D class US submarines. Um, and then uh, in 1922, we replaced it with the uh, Mark VII torpedo. So, if you have questions, please let us know. Um, but. Glad to have you on, uh, on today's little tour, and uh, thanks for coming. Hope to see you next time.